Welcome to Cage's Style Crappy. Tonight, we're gonna paint some jig heads. I paint them like most everybody else does with powder paint and heat them up in an oven. And I do a few things different and you'll see that here in a minute when we start painting up. So let's get started. We got one 32nd ounce jig head. We're gonna paint. Made these a number eight uh, victory hook. So as you can see, we're gonna use the watermelon red flake. So if you turn the air on, you'll see the paint start to rise. Turn it on slow so it don't blow up on you. Get paint all over. There it goes. Once you get it kicked off, you can turn it up a little higher and you'll see it bubble a little bit. That's fine. But the whole goal is to get it to flow like water. So how, how smooth that is. It's perfect. All right. So what I do is I take a jig head. I clamp it on the eye. like that and then put it in the oven this little oven I bought is pretty cool it gets really hot but it takes a while to heat up um, but once it heats up man it's it works good okay and that sets it it's not cured it's just set so I hang it on the rack grab another one Clamp it in the eye, in the oven. Now as the oven heats up, it won't take as long. Right now it's doing about six full seconds. But the oven keeps heats up to about 800 degrees, which is crazy hot. Swirl. Back in for a couple seconds. All right, it's good and set. It won't come off right now, it just, but it's not cured. So it goes quick and then once the oven heats up a little more it, i can go about five seconds or so ah perfect you see how shiny and you can touch it. it it cools off pretty quick but like i said it's not it's not cured it's just set the reason i got this oven i've been looking for one like this I use the heat gun also, but the heat gun makes so much noise. I do this inside, and if I'm videoing, it just is too loud. So I found this oven that's quiet. It's a it's made for like beauty salons that do hair rollers and curl hair and stuff like that. But it really works good for this. Um, I just got it a couple days ago. I've been testing it out. Like I said, it takes a while to heat up. And it takes a long time to cool off, too. That's something else you got to think about. And like I said, 800 degrees, that thing is dangerously hot. Right? So you got to be careful with it. And you can't regulate the temperature or anything on it. You just turn it on. And it, it just heats up. And stays on they say not to run it for much over an hour at a time but we'll see we'll see how it goes so if you notice this blue tray if you're from Louisiana and eat crawfish or crabs you notice that you know what this blue tray is you know that's starting to get hot All right, we're gonna switch over to to white paint. So the way I clean them, once they get gooey like that, you gotta let them cool to do it. But I can show you this pair. I have an old butter knife I stole from the kitchen. So I wiped them up. We just scrape them off.
ready to go. All right, these these caps are tight. If you drop one, you know, it ain't gonna spill. All right. There's little test caps. These they'll just pop right off. Don't care them. Like I said, we got white. Okay. I'm going to hook it up to the air. Now stir it to break it up. Once it's broke up, start turning my air on until we see it start to rise. Just a little bit at a time. Okay, it's starting to come up. There we go. Got some bubbling. Bring out a little more. There we go. Back in the clamp. Back in the oven. And the paint. And see how it, it turned like a little darker. I mean, it started to adhere to it. But just a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. Might need another coat. Let's see. The different colors sometimes need different times. They have different pigments. So some of them take longer, take more heat than the others. There we go. Nice and shiny. Good coat. Okay, so we're gonna have to heat these up a little bit. Let's see. But your jig's gotta be hot for the paint to stick to it. I'm gonna go eight seconds on this one. See if we can do it in one coat. Next step, we're gonna bake them in the oven. So I'll show you how to do that in just, just a second. I'm gonna turn this oven off and let it start cooling down. Okay, so next step, we got them painted and set, right, with the oven. Now what we're gonna do is bake them. I bake them in an air fryer, a little cheap air fryer that my daughter had in college. And she didn't want it anymore, so it became my, uh, my jig tying oven so I made this rack that fits perfect inside the air fryer so there's just set in there like that make sure none of them are touching slide it in set it for 20 minutes on it's about 315. Um, I run that for 20 minutes and we'll pull them out and we'll see what we got. They should be cured and ready to tie once they're out. Okay, while the jig heads are baking, I'll go ahead and show you how I make my uh, my fluid bits. It's pretty simple. So I have, this is a two inch rubber end cap with a stainless steel clamp. That's four bucks. Okay, this is a soil called a soil adapter, a two-inch soil adapter. At Lowe's, they have something similar, but it's a little bit shorter. It's just a reducer. The soil connection is taller right here, so it's it gives you more room to drill your hole to get air between the the rubber steel seals the bottom. And then what I would do is drill my hole where this line is in between the line and the bevel. And that ends up perfect where you can put your little valve. The valves come from, I bought these from PetSmart. It's a kit, you get five of them or six of them in there and a few like a Y. If you wanted to do two fluid beds, you just Y your tubing off. And you can go to two different fluid beds. But, um, 
that's what you need. Or you can buy them on Amazon. They're cheap. Very cheap. Then I cut. Next piece. It's just a piece of 2 inch PVC pipe. This is scheduled 40 PVC pipe. I cut it 2 and a quarter inches tall. Which for me in the small jigs that I do, it makes a good height. Where you don't waste a whole lot of paint. I take, I pour half a jar, half of a two ounce bottle of uh, powder paint, the Protect powder paint. It holds a half a jar and it's perfect. So you have that. Then I have a knockout. It's called a knockout test cap. I put that just to, as a cap, and then I put, I bought a real cap that secures it on there, so the paint doesn't come out. So, so how we build it is we would drill your hole to fit your valve right? that's this you drill a hole push your valve in and I use a heat gun you could use silicone you don't even have to if you get your hole tight enough you can squeeze these valves in there and they'll mold to the plastic and it's not much pressure so you're not going to lose any air but uh, I put a little bit of hot glue on them just to hold them in place so it won't accidentally knock them out. So once you have your hole drilled, next step, you need a filter. Your filter paper for your, to let the air through that makes the fluid bed that your powder paint sits on top of. There's, there's a million YouTube videos on how to make these things. I've done a bunch of them and I've tried different things. A lot of people use just printer paper. I find that a thick uh, brown paper bag, like this one came from Dick's Sporting Goods, is the best. It works the best. It's it's the smoothest with the when the air flows through it, when you get your bubbling, you don't get all the volcanoing. You want it even on all the sides. So when you push down, you want to get it started even. There we go. So I got paper. It's a little bit thicker on this side, but that's okay. I mean, you, you're covering it up. You want to make sure you don't have any gaps. And you got to push it down in there and tight. And what I usually do is just step on it. And get it all the way in. So once you get it in there good, make sure it didn't puncture a hole. The other thing I do, when I cut my two and a quarter inch PVC pipe, I sand it to get a smooth edge. Nothing gets bonded on the paper and tears the paper or anything. So that's it, there's no glue, nothing. The only glue is once you put your valve in, then you just pop it in the rubber piece. Tighten your clamp. And there we go. There's your fluid pin. It's all that's to it with the valve. I didn't drill the hole. But then your caps. Well, done. Compact, stable. This is why I put the rubber bone. If you don't have the rubber button, it's easy to knock over. And well, if you knock it over, it's a mess. So I just put the rubber, and that makes it a lot more stable. So it's about four dollars for the rubber cap. It's about three dollars and fifty cents for the soil adapter, and a piece of two-inch pipe. You can buy a two-foot piece. At Home Depot or Lowe's for I think six bucks. And you can buy a, a 10 foot piece if you want. You know, you'll get a bunch of them out of one little piece though. Like I said, knockout caps, not even dollars, 75 cents or so. And this is about a dollar fifty, two dollar cap. So the whole thing comes out somewhere around, like I said, eight to ten bucks if you just do these pieces. And it comes about 15 if you had the rubber bottom. Okay, so the air pump that I use, this is just an aquarium pump. This is the smallest one. 
uh, this was fifteen dollars at PetSmart. Um, it's just an aquarium air supply pump, air pump they call them. You can buy them in different sizes. You can buy them variable speeds, uh, pressures, but uh, that's all you need. This, I mean, it it doesn't take much air to do this. So you don't have to get very fancy, but it's quiet. It runs good. No problems at all. Buy a little hose. The hose is about five extra dollars. And it, the pump came with a little check valve. So you don't get anything back. So, so that's it. That's how I build all my fluid beds. I got, I got about six of them with different colors in them. Um, instead of pouring it back in the jar and trying to clean them out to change colors I just have one for each color I use I don't paint that many different colored jig heads so my main colors I have the fluid beds for if not if I do just some specialty stuff I just use the jar I'll shake the jar up real good and just dip them in the jar but uh, that's it that's all my fluid bed stuff 20 minutes are up on that on the air fryer with the jigs in it so what we're gonna do is take the, the rack out we're gonna have to let it cool for just a little bit once you take it out the jig heads cool pretty quick but the rack stays hot so we can just set that somewhere where we can see I'm gonna let that cool for a minute oh I got one stuck together okay I bought these little G kits from Amazon for a while, and they come in these little plastic cases. But these little plastic cases work great to There we go. I said that rack is still hot, but the jigs aren't. The jigs cool off quick. That is the watermelon red flake. And if I can grab a white, I'll show you the white one. And there is the white. If the paint gets on the hook, that's okay. I, I try not to get too much on it, but it actually does good when the when you put the glue on the hook, it kind of melts it. It kind of helps the thread bind to the hook. So it's not a problem at all. And then I just put them in my storage box. That's how I paint my jig heads. Hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned. We'll do one next one we'll do is on the how I pour my jig heads in the hooks that I use. And uh, we'll cover that next time.